I'd like to ask this question. Um, did Jesus really rise from the dead? And if he did, is there any evidence for this? Now this is very important because I think if the Lord Jesus did not rise from the dead, well you can just throw the whole Bible away. It's not all that impressive. Because here's why. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. In other words, if Jesus hasn't been raised from the dead, then nothing is validated. The Bible is really a waste of time. It's like any other book. But if he is raised from the dead, then that changes everything. Now, it's very impressive that Jesus rose from the dead. Here's why. Now, you know, the Super Bowl was on this week, and I was going to watch it, and I forgot. And, I mean, there's lots of good athletes, and they're impressive, but is it really that impressive? Now, somebody rising from the dead? Now, that's impressive. You know, one time I was debating on this campus, and this kid came up to me and said, Sam, I, I believe that it's true that Jesus rose from the dead. Based upon your evidence, I think he rose from the dead. I just don't care. Now, see, there's something wrong there. I remember when the Lord first started working in my heart and, and I started questioning God and my purpose in the world and all these things. The idea that Jesus rose from the dead became very important to me because here's why. Suddenly I realized if he rose from the dead, then he's got the answers. Because I knew the Pope, the priests, the preachers, all the experts, the philosophers, they were just like me. How much could they really know? But somebody rising from the dead, that changes everything. He's got the answer. So when we start thinking reasonably and rationally, the resurrection of Jesus Christ starts to become very impressive. It is impressive, isn't it? Somebody dead for three days? You're at a funeral? You're sitting there? The guy wakes up and he starts talking? Now that's impressive. God has blanketed the human race with death. Everybody's going to die. Everybody's on their way to death. One person stands head and shoulders above the entire human race he defeats death. And God uses that, the resurrection, to point to the Lord Jesus and say, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And so that's what we're trying to do today. And it's good news. Jesus rose from the dead is not bad news. That means that God visited our planet. There's hope for us. There is a resurrection coming. We can live in an eternal kingdom. God loves us. It, 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 it's good news. It's not bad that Jesus has risen from the dead. Well. I used to love this doctrine of the resurrection whenever I was debating with the university students. Here's why. It's the sledgehammer that just ruins every argument. And it goes something like this. I would say, well, well, well tell me your thoughts and your philosophies about whatever. And they would tell me and say, oh, well, that's very interesting. Um, uh, uh, now, who said that? And, and where did that idea come from? Oh, oh, that guy, oh, he's dead. Shucks. My guy isn't. Mine's alive. Mine was dead and he rose from the dead, therefore I win. My guy knows more than yours. I'll take a resurrected guy over a dead guy any day, won't you? Well, see, all of the books and the philosophers and the experts, they're all either going to die or they're dead. And so therefore, the Lord Jesus has the answers. He's the one with the ultimate answers. We have the ultimate weapon with the resurrection. So it always would come down to this. Well, well, you just you say he's risen from the dead, but but how do you know that's true? You say, well, we have evidence for that. What is it? Show us the evidence. Well, and it goes something like this. The Jews were trying to stamp out the doctrine of the Christians that Jesus was resurrected. And they were trying frantically to find the body. Now, it's a fact that Jesus was crucified. The Bible has it, extra biblical sources. There was a Jesus that was crucified. They were trying to stamp out Christianity. They were persecuting it, but they couldn't find the body. The body was never found. What happened to it? There's only a few possibilities. Number one, the disciples stole the body, and then they went around and told everybody he rose from the dead. They hid the body somewhere. That's one possibility. The other one is, well, the Romans, um, they uh, didn't really know how to kill people very good. So even though they nailed him to a cross, stabbed him in the heart, and, and put him in this ground for three days, somehow he didn't die and he came out of the ground, overpowered the guard, and told everybody he rose from the dead. That's another thought. Another idea is the apostles were so wanting him to be raised from the dead, they hallucinated, they convinced themselves, and, and, and they thought that this happened when really it didn't happen. 
Well, that's ridiculous because the psychologists had just proved that you're not going to get 12, 11, 12 people to hallucinate or imagine the same thing. You're not going to get Romans that execute people for a living that don't know how to do it. That's ridiculous. And the idea that he stole the body now. Let's examine that one. The disciples somehow, one of them or two of them or three of them or whatever, stole the body. That's ridiculous as well. Because here's why. They were willing to die for the fact that they said they saw him rise from the dead. They had this dramatic change. Let's look at it. Now remember, they were afraid because they thought they were going to get crucified next. They all ran away, they all abandoned Jesus, remember? On the evening of the first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, get that. I mean, these guys were after them. They were scared. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. So he was walked through the wall, but he had a physical body. But the point I'm trying to get to here is that they were scared. They were scared for their lives. And then, we know that Jesus had a physical body because he says, look at my hands and feet. Touch me and see. Does a ghost have flesh and bones as you see I have? So they, they, he said, look at, I'm not a ghost. Because sometimes people say, well, you know, he wasn't really physically risen. It was sort of a spirit that they saw, a ghost. No, it was a physical body. But what made them change? What made them change from being scared into going out and proclaiming this truth that they said they saw him rise from the dead and then they were willing to die for what they said they saw. Now watch this. After that, Paul says, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time. He said, yeah, you can talk to these guys if you want. Most of them are still living. And last of all, he appeared to me also, for I am the least of all the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Remember, Paul was Saul, and he was running around killing Christians and hunting them down and imprisoning them. Then he met the resurrected Jesus, and he changed and became a Christian and a preacher, and the greatest preacher of the New Testament, and he lived a life of heavy persecution, and he himself was martyred. What happened to him? I think what he said happened to him. He saw the resurrected Christ. The point I'm making is this. Whenever you examine a historical event, you have to go by the credibility of the witnesses. How do we know that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated? How do we know there was a George Washington? How do we know any of these things? How credible are the people that said these things happened in history? How credible are the disciples? They were willing to die for what they said they saw. Now, nobody's going to die for something they, they are making up. We stole the body. But at the end they would say, don't kill me, I stole the body. That didn't happen. They were willing to die. That's how God gave us the evidence, the credibility of the witnesses. But lastly, the most important piece of evidence is this. There's a song that goes, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living whatever men may say. And then the end of it goes, He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives? He lives within my heart. That's the proof. God Himself convinces people by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you're a spiritual person. You're living in a body. And God is spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes into you and He convinces you in the depths of your being that Jesus Christ is real and He's true and you can know Him and He's raised from the dead and you can know the Lord Jesus Christ. May it happen to you. God bless you.